My name's David Rodwin, and this is The Life. So I'm recording this from my car. The reason I'm broadcasting from my car is that I'm not allowed to be in my apartment during daylight hours. We've just finished the first day of Rosh Hashanah, and I may have just found out that I'm on the road to being evicted. And I've been looking for a good place to actually shoot my next vlog. So I figured, I live in Los Angeles, I might as well just record it in my car. And this is an entire new series, because I was experimenting for the entire first year I was on YouTube. Greetings and salutations. My name is David Rodwin, and this is some epic bullshit. But the problem with epic bullshit is that while I was ranting about a number of things, and those were fun to do, and people have told me that I shouldn't be mad, but I am, it didn't give me a lot of opportunity to actually create other kinds of vlogs that were more positive, I guess, in a certain kind of way. It, it made my head want to explode. And I needed to have a new start, a new beginning, a new vlog, because I have had a big change of heart and mind and a lot of other things. And it all happened at the end of my last series on fasting. I was fasting for eight days, and at the end of the eight days, something really, really weird happened. I became joyful. I've never experienced it after a fast in the past, and <laughs> that sounds really funny. Now, that was not my intention with doing the fast. I was fasting for a lot of reasons. I was fasting because I had broken up with my girlfriend and it was a very difficult transition period. I also was fasting because I was looking for clarity and I thought maybe with a little bit of prayer and a lot of not eating any food, I would reach some kind of clarity. But out of the blue, around day six, when I stopped doing the master cleanser and I was just on a water only fast, something totally shifted. I finished my fast almost exactly two months ago, and I am still pretty much riding this incredible wave of joy and gratitude. This experience feels like what I've heard doctors describe what you're supposed to feel when you go on antidepressants. It's as though this veil just lifts over the world and everything looks so much brighter and happier. And the irony about that is that things were really kind of rough for me a few months ago and I decided to actually go on antidepressants. And they didn't do anything after about a month. So I told the doctor and we doubled the dose. And they didn't do anything for another month. And right then was when I decided to do the fast. And I stopped the medication, I stopped eating, and six days after that, boom, the world really truly did seem lighter. Nothing is fixed. My circumstances are still the same, if not worse. I'm not sure what I'll do next. But for some reason, it doesn't bother me. And I have no good explanation, but I'm going to ride this wave for as long as I can. Because I figured it would disappear at a certain point. And instead, it just continued and continued. I experienced a kind of gratitude on a regular basis of the simplest things, of looking down at my feet and seeing that my legs still worked. And after you've been laid up for months at a time, it uh, it's a joyous thing to be able to run and to be able to run on the beach and in, through the water and barefoot. And it's an amazing thing after you fast, when you actually start eating food again. Every bite of every single thing you put in your mouth mm. tastes like ambrosia, tastes like manna from heaven. It is that just, so it explodes and it just keeps on, you just want to put every different kind of taste in your mouth as well. So in some ways you start eating a lot, but I portioned myself very clearly after the breakfast because I have broken fasts terribly in the past. Third time I did a master cleanser, a friend invited me out to a burger and a beer and the turtle races at Brennan's on Lincoln. And I said, fuck it, let's see what happens when I have a burger and a beer after not eating anything for 10 days. I was just testing my body. I was testing the limits. I was expecting to throw up, to feel nauseous, and I was ready for that. And instead, nothing happened. So after this fast two months ago, I made sure to go very slowly back onto food. I started with a homemade vegetable soup, and then I made a homemade chili, and I would just have little bits, and I would have juice, and I would have a lot of water still. And it was really wonderful slowly coming back onto food. And every bite of the vegetable soup was just incredible. And oh, every bite of the chili, oh, the spicing in the chili was just unbelievable. And mm. I am still pretty much riding this incredible wave of joy and gratitude. In addition, about a week after I finished my fast, I got some really great news. The Sundance Screenwriters Lab really loved a pitch of one of my films, and they asked for the script. 
The only problem was, I hadn't actually written the script. I'd only pitched them the idea with a short synopsis. So they said, yes, we'd love to see your script in three weeks. And then I had to write an entire screenplay in three weeks, which is a little bit less time than I usually take to write a screenplay. And it made me feel like for the first time, honestly, in years, that I had a place in this town, in this industry, and I wasn't completely wasting all my time. And when I was ready, after three weeks, I turned it in. And it was a month that flew by faster than any month I've had in the last seven years because I had such singularity of purpose. I had someone waiting for something that I was creating and I had an absolute deadline. And right after that I went back to New York to spend Rosh Hashanah with my mom and being back in New York was so fantastic. The city was just alive. It made me want to move back immediately and I saw old friends and I saw my dad and it was just so exciting and Rosh Hashanah was beautiful with my mom and I was so glad I spent the time and made the trip all the way back and while I was there I found out the news that I needed to find a new apartment very soon. Maybe I'll start house sitting. Just drive across the country. I'll put on all of my stuff into storage like I've done once before and I'll hit the road. Move to San Francisco? I don't know. And while this threw me for a short spell, maybe I'll get involved with the Obama campaign. I immediately began to see, you know, it's Rosh Hashanah, it's a new year, I need new beginnings. So now, I'm looking for a place to live, I'm still looking for a job, I have absolutely nothing settled in my life, but I'm back to vlogging and I'm happy about that, and this is a new series and I hope you enjoy it, because my name's David Rodwin, and this is The Life. There's something about the process that feels strangely ritualistic and you can actually feel a certain kind of power going through your veins. And in addition to the one strap that you put on your arm, you also put one on your head 